This is KGW News at Sunrise. Hello, Oregon. How this morning on Sunrise, POTUS in the Rose City. President Biden is in Portland this morning. It's his second visit here in just six months. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Saturday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. We'll get to the president's visit and other headlines this morning. But first, let's check in with Chris McGinnis for a quick, quick look at our Saturday forecast. Good and, morning. And we're welcoming the president we with uh, really nice weather, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> there you go. It continues. It's still dark and early out there. Of course, sunrise creeping later and later into the seven o'clock hour. What you can't see in this picture, though, is the haze, the wildfire smoky haze that is pretty much present across most of the Pacific Northwest. That will be with us throughout the weekend. It's 53 last check at PDX. The wind is fairly light there, but check this out. It is 68 in Troutdale. The east breeze, the east wind machine is cranking, so in some cases temperatures are quite warm. If you're waking up to an east breeze this morning, you are likely quite warm to start the day. Meanwhile, we hop over the Cascades. We're down near the freezing mark right now in Baker City and Burns. And once again, you folks will have a rapid warm up once the sun comes up today. I mentioned the air quality, uh, moderate air quality showing up in a lot of the Willamette Valley, even a couple of red uh, indicators now that indicating unhealthy air and very unhealthy air in Lane County downwind of the Cedar Creek fire. That will continue to be an issue, as we mentioned throughout the weekend and all of us seeing that wildfire haze in the air, but it will be warm today. In fact, record warmth in our forecast again today. I've got high temperatures topping out in the mid 80s, Tim. All right, Chris, thanks very much. Well, President Biden touched down in Portland just before 630 last night. The main purpose of his visit is to drum up support for Democrats, especially Tina Kotek, who is in a very close race for Oregon governor. There are, of course, some tight congressional races in the state as well. Well, the president has a busy schedule in Portland today, especially this afternoon. And first up today, he'll visit the East Portland Community Center. That's where we find Christine Petawanich this morning. And Christine, he'll make a speech about noon today, right? Yeah, good morning, Tim. Here this morning, it is early still, still dark. There's not a whole lot you can see outside, but I can tell you after going inside, lots of news crews setting up their cameras. Also, uh, special service or, uh, you know, security services here, making sure that everything is fine for the president a little bit later today. Here at the East Portland Community Center, he's going to be talking about lowering drug costs at noon. And here are a couple specifics about that plan. Uh, the president's focus will be on how the Inflation Reduction Act is set to go into effect January 1st of 2023, and that'll help people, he says, afford their prescriptions. This as an open enrollment for Medicare starts up. The message is similar to what he said Friday in California. Take a listen. This year, the American people won. We took on Big Pharma and we beat them finally. We beat them finally. Now, if Big Pharma tries to raise drug prices faster than inflation, they're going to have to write a check to Medicare for, to cover the difference. Now, instead of that money going in the pockets of drug companies, it's going to go into the pockets in the form of lower drug prices in America. There's more money at the end of the month to pay for groceries, to get your car repaired, to buy your grandson a birthday present, whatever it is. The Inflation Reduction Act gives Medicare the power to negotiate lower prescription drug prices. Again, that is the first of two events that we're expecting here in Portland. Here's a quick look at the timeline that we're expecting. Again, here at the East Portland Community Center at noon, President Biden is supposed to be talking about lowering prescription drug costs. Following that event in Southeast Portland, he's expected to throw his support behind Tina Kotek. That's the Democrat running for governor. That'll be at about 145. Then at 250, the president is expected to leave Portland, making his way back to the East Coast, where he'll spend the weekend in Delaware. Back out here live, just a reminder to expect delays. In fact, TriMet has already come out and said that people should be expecting delays until probably six o'clock tonight. But if you're in this area of Southeast Portland, maybe you're downtown or even out by the airport, just be patient. Tim. All right, Christine, thanks a lot for being out there for us. Well, President Biden's first stop last night was all about meeting with Democratic campaign volunteers in Southeast Portland. He greeted them with a box of donuts, in fact, and even joined volunteers by working the phones. He made several calls and left quite an impression on those in the room. The emotion, oh, I want to scream. Well, I get to scream a little bit, but it was great. I've never, I've never seen a president like that before, uh, just to be, you know, so close. It was an amazing experience. I mean, President Biden was on, he was inspiring. 
it really was amazing to be in the room with him. Biden's visit comes at a critical time for Oregon Democrats. Recent polling suggests Tina Kotek is deadlocked with Republican Christine Drazen in the race for governor, non-affiliated candidate Betsy Johnson trailing. Both Drazen and Johnson responded to the president's visit. Drazen tweeting, quote, Oregonians are tired of status quo politicians like Tina Kotek and Kate Brown, who have made life worse for families across the state. Bringing in a failing president isn't going to save a failing candidate. Meanwhile, unaffiliated, unaffiliated candidate Welcome Betsy Johnson posted a video saying she hopes the president comes more often because it means homeless camps that she pointedly blamed on Kotek get cleaned up. She also said the president needs to talk to local officials about actually holding criminals accountable. And stay with us for continuing coverage of the president's visit today. You can watch his speech coming up streaming on KGW or KGW Plus. And we will have a wrap up of events, of course, later on KGW News right here on air. Well, even without the president's visit, it was a busy night for Portland police. An officer shot a man in downtown Portland after police got a 911 call about a man chasing people with a knife. Now, this unfolded near Southwest 12th and Jefferson, where witnesses tell us they saw a man, uh, an officer, I should say, shoot a man. They took this video just after it happened. Those witnesses believe the man was hit in the arm. Now, police confirmed one officer fired his weapon after finding a man matching the suspect description. They say the injured man is expected to survive. Investigators believe there are witnesses who may have information who left the scene. They'd like to talk to them. At about 90 minutes before that shooting, a man was killed in a homicide in Northeast Portland. Police found the man with a gunshot wound right across the street from Holiday Park. That's in the Lloyd District around 4.30 yesterday afternoon. He died later in the hospital. So far, no one's been arrested and investigators have not released information on a suspect. Well, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler is set to announce an aggressive plan to manage the city's homeless population. According to Willamette Week, it includes a ban on unsanctioned camping citywide. We got a brief statement from the mayor's office confirming they are working on something in this regard with plans to announce proposals next week. It's easy to see people living on the streets of Portland, the tents and other temporary shelters on sidewalks and other public places throughout the city. Now Willamette Week reports Mayor Ted Wheeler will propose sweeping change by banning all unsanctioned camping and building huge sanctioned homeless camping areas as an alternative. According to Willamette Week, the mayor wants three 500-person homeless campuses, with each campus divided into four 125-person camps. The city would look to have them managed by outside contractors. We asked City Hall to confirm and got a two-sentence response from the mayor's office. The first sentence saying, City Commissioner Dan Ryan and I want to complete our outreach to elected leaders who have key responsibilities related to the issues of affordable housing and homelessness before we finalize any proposals that will be announced next week. We visited Old Town today and the Street Roots office. Vendors of the homegrown paper are either homeless or have been there. Nobody, nobody wakes up and decides to be homeless. Rachel Delaney is now in a tiny home village and one step away from permanent housing and not in favor of large sanctioned camps. Like I've been through the shelter system with it being hundreds of people in that shelter and I fell through the cracks completely. We also got a response from Multnomah County leadership today that included sharing a draft letter from the mayor and Commissioner Ryan. It generally spells out this campus proposal, but it puts all the responsibility for operating all houseless shelters on the county, not the city. County Chair Deborah Kafori gave us a statement laying out what the county is already doing with a final line stating, if the mayor's office wants to clean up this city and enforce time, place and manner laws, they don't have to hide behind me or anyone else. They can just do it. Not a ringing endorsement of a plan that seeks to end homeless camping in the city by potentially creating homeless mega camps. Now, this isn't the first time very large sanctioned camps have been proposed, but they've never been built. The mayor is trying to build some support ahead of any announcement made next week, and we will see exactly what that proposal looks like when that happens. Stay tuned. Well, there's a nationwide push to cut and eliminate greenhouse gas emissions from utility companies to school districts. In just two minutes, how one Oregon school district is already seeing those changes.